My name is Dylan Rose Reingold. Um, I'm a visual artist born and based in New York City. I have a drawing practice defined within painting. It's kind of hard for me to categorize my work because I don't feel like it fits into a set genre or barrier. It's kind of falling in the cracks in between. Um, I would say that I'm starting to build a bridge between abstract figuration and surrealism. And I'm trying to push the envelope as much as I can to expand the visual language of what can be defined as a painting. The first step in my creative process is drawing, and more specifically, surrealist automatism or automatic drawing, automatic writing, is, I think is the more popular notion for this. But basically in this process, what I'm trying to do is really shut off my mind and just draw from the subconscious um, and this exercise is really helpful for me and it helps to inform all of my paintings, not only in this series, but the works beforehand, most of the works in my MFA thesis. Um, and it's something that I realize I haven't been sharing or been as vocal about, but full transparency, this part of my creative process is really important and really sets down the foundation. So once I have all of these drawings, it's helpful for me to see, thinking in terms of the psyche, what, what symbols are repeating and what is subconsciously going on and what objects or what narratives will leave these drawings and end up in the large scale works. And a lot of the times, because there is so much layering going on in my work, and I never really want to think of anything as a mistake, even though I, I make a lot of mistakes. Um, I try and keep that as honest as I can in the work so they're still visible, so you can see the movement over time and you can see the evolution. Um, so a lot of these works will start off with some of these drawings and the similar objects and narratives, but then get lost over time through the layering, whereas others will have sort of a dreamscape Mm, sort of a dreamscape approach and you'll notice some things that may not make perfect sense but then once you see the studies or the drawings that came before it you'll kind of understand the whole narrative. I think a core memory from my childhood was the dress-up bin, was this wooden box that I had in my basement and I think me and my sister's favorite activity growing up was playing dress-up and looking through the mishmash of random objects that we would steal from a board game or old accessories from a Halloween costume or elements from a dance recital, whatever we could find. But for some reason, putting on these personas and having the freedom to create a look on our own that could make us feel like we were embodying someone else was very powerful and playful and something that made us feel good. And recently I've been thinking a lot about how this idea of escapism and fantasy has remained stagnant throughout growing up and how the lens for that has altered. So with a much more contemporary lens now, I think escapism could be something as simple as a yossified Snapchat filter, or in terms of an editorial, putting on this look and embodying this identity that has nothing to do with you or your interest or who you feel like at your core, but having the freedom to try and be someone else for that moment. And I'm not sure if that's the right answer and I'm not sure if that's the wrong answer but I'm definitely curious as to why people feel like they need to put on these personas and they need to escape in a way from the social barriers or the beauty standards that society, society inherently places on us as women and that's really 
what the inspiration for this series is about. 